this tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Computer animation. Computer Started with animation. Hi folks, we're at the end of 2020 and I just want to recommend you to overcome that step to visual programming. Sounds intimidating to have a programming language. We've had a programming language in my sense of version one, which is called Mel, but uh, Mel is just passé and uh, you have Bifrost Graph now in in the arena and uh, it is so powerful that, and it hasn't been explored in any way really only just marginal things like uh, the video which we're just starting to see now because I'm showing yet another experiment with Bifrost Graph so it's really worthwhile and it's not only for special effects it's uh, for many things and people don't know what it's really good for but we know that it's so powerful that you should try it so give it a chance and enjoy this video. You don't need a character animation in order to follow this tutorial, but I have a character animation here and he is already, this chap is already made of points and not of his suit anymore. The suit, by the way, is right here. When I unhide it, this is what he looks like in his nice suit with the, all the particles on top. When I hide the Bifrost graph, he's just doing this regular dance. And by the way, he does it in slow motion. That has to do with the frame rate because the motion capture data come at a different frame rate, uh, f different from the frame rate, which I have in the timeline, but I kind of appreciate it. Otherwise, it would be a very, very brief animation. Uh, you need the human IK for this. You import from the Windows General Editor's content browser a rigged character and uh, in my case Eric rigged and uh, then you feed into this character motion capture data and um, the motion capture data in these days you get from Windows and animation editors and the motion library. That's the Rococo Motion Library, and there are many free ones, and others are not really expensive. So, uh, six dollars here, for example. And then you have a whole selection of uh, inputs here, the sources, and you choose that character from the Motion Capture um, um, Rococo Gallery, and then you have this dance. But it's not important, you can do the same thing with a polygon cube. Um, now we're going to hide him because we don't want to see him anymore. We're interested in the particles and we unhide the Bifrost Graph. Now the Bifrost Graph, how do you go about this? Well, you go to Windows and open the Bifrost Graph Editor. And in my case, I have set up the scene already and uh, you just follow along. First of all, I introduced a rig. Uh, a rigged character, actually it's a mesh, it's the geometry of this character here. It's the not the dots yet, we, uh, we're not there yet, but uh, this is how we start. We middle mouse drag the geometry and not the skeleton, the geometry which is this node here uh, with a middle mouse button in here. And uh, then we have an output here which is called mesh and you feed the mesh into a new node which is called get point position. Now how do you get the point position node? Well you just use the tab key somewhere here and type in get underscore point position and you see uh, you have several point get point whatevers and one the one we need is we want to get the point position. Why do we want to get the point position? Because the mesh is the whole geometry and uh, we need uh, to select the points of that geometry. Uh, it's like a, a little bit like the attribute 
no, it's a likely component editor. Uh, but uh, here in Bifrost Graph, it's, uh, it's a different methodology. And um, you have a mathematical node here, which creates from the geometry all the points. It's just a, a massive vector with lots of parameters, which uh, is an output here. And how do we output this? If we feed the get point position di directly into the output node, which is here, we won't see anything because we need to construct the points. This is a mathematical description and this is the construction of the points. So we find the construct points in the same way with the tab key as the get point position. So you need to know get point position in order to create from geometry points, uh, mathematical description of points. In order to actually see the points, make the points look like something, you need to construct the points. So we have a construction of points here and then we need a set point shape. So actually, actually the set point shape enables us to modify the way we see the points. So set point shape and the points output of the construct points goes into the input of the set point shape. Now uh, the shape point the set point shape has an output which feeds into the output of our final scene. That's what you see here. When you select the set point shape, just let's uh, recap, we need a get point position, then a construct points and then set points shape. When you select it, you see barely anything here to modify. You can uh, change it from a point to a disc to a circle, etc. We have a disc, for example, for simple reasons. And what you've seen is just tiny uh, discs. What is this now? This is the final thing I'm, I'm going to show you in this context here. Uh, it is a node which feeds a value, just a simple value into this node here. The, set the point shape because we don't have a size here. We feed the size w into this node with a value node and the value node has a value which is not called size because it doesn't know anything about it. Uh, it, it uh, but the set point shape interprets the output that value as a size. So for example when we look at the character now with the little dots and now we change that value from 0 0.2 to 1 we get much bigger points. and 0 0.1 makes them very small. So this is how we get points and we can render them in Arnold, of course. If you don't know how these things are worded, how they are called, construct points, for example, just try something like that. Tab key and construct. And you see, you can construct a mesh, you can construct points, you can construct strands, for example. And uh, so uh, you have to guess or know these terminologies in order to set these things up. For example, if you want a particle system, you need to know that you need particles. Tab key, particles. And what do you think you need? Get particle solver settings, basic particle graph, uh, properties, etc. You have to choose the one you want to have and make connections which, uh, where the colors match, where the, where the flow graph is intact. You need to do some work by yourself and maybe get an inspiration from this. This is a different scene. It's basically the same animation with slightly bigger dots here, disks, in this case particle disks, and they're not particles yet uh, in our previous example, but now they are. And this character, it's so slow because Maya has to think about creating these particles, but it's actually actually very fast compared to the previous and old Maya particle systems. And now you see the, this shadow here, which consists of particles. Let's have a look at the node editor, Windows, by Frost Graph Editor. By the way, if you've created a, a graph and you don't see it, just uh, open the scene again and create a graph. Although you might think I've created one already, you have an empty graph here which just has an input and output, but right here you see the previous graph you made. So uh, this is the graph number two and this is the graph number one. You might remember 
Eric rig that's the mesh get point position and from the point position we go to construct points we set the point shape and we have a value which gives us the size of that shape now um, we have a new node here is called simulate particles and the simulate particles um, get the points as the sources and that's basically everything it's very simple really and uh, I created a collider here, which is not necessary for the animation, but you will see that uh, in the final rendering that the particles collide with the floor. So the disk shape is this thing down here. So the particles collide. This is very simple. If you just uh, get rid of this, the uh, preview of the animation goes much faster. And uh, other than that, the particles go into the output as the point shape go into the output as well. That means we see the particles, that's these shadow things here, and we see the the disks of the mesh, these points here. That's basically everything. Now I wish you a very, very good day and have much fun with the Bifrost Graph Editor. Bye bye. <laughs>